Hello everyone, and welcome to my first actual video on this channel, but I wanted to talk about one of my favorite games that I recently found called Jim's Computer. And today we're going to be unpacking its story and some theories on the lore. So without further ado, let's begin. Before we actually start the story, I do want to state that the UI scene is actually the old Roblox UI. Yeah, I'm surprised that they were able to do it so well. However, it's probably just for aesthetic, given that none of the buttons work on the top. So... Yeah, we're uh, kind of sucks that we can't use the 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 menu or the the exit button. So let's begin with day one. On the first day, you take control of Jim and and explore his new computer. The only apps available on his desktop are news and shopping. The news app provides information about the game's world, including a story about an oil refinery opening in the town of Robloxia. New chemical refinery, grand opening in Robloxia. This bodes well for our town. Business has forever been Robloxia's lifeblood, the mayor said on Saturday. Our town grows and grows with no end in sight. I'm glad that I'm here to see it. The shopping app allows you to buy three items, a Roblox trial, a super bouncy ball, and a slingshot. You can use these items in-game, but ultimately there's no use on them, and post the day, they will never come back. You cannot use RoadChat, even though it is one of the apps on the first day, sadly. It says that it's under maintenance and simply cannot be accessed. As night falls, you fall into the first day, or rather, first night segment. Jim must check two closets in his house to ensure that he is safe. There is no actual danger in this night, but there is a perceived danger of something lurking in the shadows, which adds to the game's ambience. Once they are done checking the two closets, Jim will say that he feels safe, and once returning back to bed, the day segment ends. On day two, Jim wakes up and by checking the news on, J on his own computer, there is a report that a person has disappeared from Robloxia without a trace. Sudden disappearance in downtown Robloxia. A man was found missing after a neighbor called in a wellness check on his household yesterday, the 15th of February. The ensuing police search found no evidence of movement except for a distinct pugnant smell. It's like you vanished into thin air, the RCPD chief said on Sunday. This news is unsettling to the player, but it probably could just go unnoticed, or it really isn't that big of a deal, considering that Jim never really does anything because of it. On this day, whilst accessing the shop, Jim can buy three new items. A paintball gun, blocks of cola, and a hamburger. Although these items can be used, there is absolutely no use for them. As with the first night, Jim checks the two closets in his house before going to bed. Once again, although there is no danger in this game, Jim and the player kind of feels a little uneasy with the fact that they have to check the closets to make sure that they are safe. But the night segment ends once again as Jim says that he feels safe. On day three, things are getting more tense. On the news, there's a report about several disappearances in Roblox with no evidence, leads, or tips to assist the police. Serial disappearances before Robloxia. No evidence, no tips, and no leads. We're making zero progress, and it seems there are more and more cases by the day," said the RCPD chief on uh, on Monday. At this rate, law enforcement will be overwhelmed country ride, and God forbid these cases spread elsewhere. They seem pretty worried about the about these random disappearances, with people just disappearing without a trace to anything. Regardless, you still have to head over to the shop to buy five items that day. Moving on to the night segment, Jim checks both of the closets. This time, however, instead of simply saying that he feels safe and going back to bed, the TV in the, in the room turns on once checking the second closet. It plays only static. Once turning off the TV, the computer turns on where you have to go and check RoadChat. On RoadChat, Jim receives a message from someone with no name, simply telling him to prepare. The night segment ends after Jim reads the message. Quick note, on this day, no longer does Jim say that he feels safe, demonstrating that the detention he has and the severity of the message impacting him after the night has ended. On day four, things are mounting up. This time on the news is a report of the mayor addressing the recent string of disappearances and of an unusual oil refinery spill. Mayor to address missing persons, refinery incident. The people ought to know, the mayor said, continuing. We will divulge the information we have regarding these repeat cases. When questioned, the mayor denied any connection between the disappearances and the recent chemical spill that occurred at the refinery. It's interesting that this spill was never brought up, and it's only been four days since the opening. 
I guess just like Roblox moderators, the regulators in the game are just as good as their job. Anyway, by going to the shop, you can buy three items. A first aid kit, a bunch, a bunch of cans of beans, and a box of bottled water. While the first aid kit is useless and just can't be used, the cans and the box of water are both put in the living room where they remain for the rest of the game. Showing that that whole preparation thing that the mysterious figure told Jim on Road Chat hit him hard enough to actually order these things. The night segment is more tense as Jim settles in for the night. Suddenly a text appears on the screen. There's someone inside my house. Jim's fears and likely yours escalate as he checks the closets in the room only to find nothing there. As you turn to leave the room and slowly go back to your bed, the door to the house creaks open, and something slips out into the night. Whatever it was, it seemed to have been a shadow in his own home. The mystery of whatever this is dissipates, as after you hear and see the door opening into the dark night outside, the day ends. Jim begins to wonder what horrors await him in the next and final day. Day 5. A sense of dread has settled over the town of Robloxia, and chaos and panic reign in the streets. And the once bright blue sky that we have seen and grown accustomed to now burns with the colors of the sunset. The mayor has declared martial law, and the military has descended upon the town to maintain order. The mayor declares martial law, orders shelter in place. Panic plagues Robloxia as an unknown threat moves in the darkness, the mayor said. In these difficult times, I see only one way to move forward. I hand my authority over to the military in order to ensure the safety of my citizens. The mayor continued to deny any connections between the attacks and the chemical spill that occurred at the refinery. But it seems that their efforts are in vain as the disappearances and strange occurrences continue. The online shop offers little comfort to Jim, as only three items remain. Wooden boards, a hammer, and a blacked out object on the sixth lot, which had previously in all other days been unavailable. Jim, in an attempt to uh, secure his home, purchases all three. The black object that he has remains a mystery, its purpose unknown, its true nature, a source of unease with us. As the night falls on the fifth and final day, the atmosphere in Jim's home grows increasingly tense. The silence, it's broken by the sound of Jim's computer turning on, as if awakening to the impending danger. Remember that guy with no name? Well, this guy, we'll call the mysterious stranger, the one who warned him to prepare, now is urging Jim to stay quiet and keep calm. Jim continues to do the same thing he's done for the past four days, checking his closets. But this time, as he opens the last closet, he hears a series of knocks on the door. The knocks grow louder and more insistent. Suddenly, the TV bursts into life, blaring the emergency alert system, sending chills down yours and Jim's spine. The knocks continue relentlessly, driving Jim to pull out the blackout, the blacked out object from the previous day that he had and purchased from the online shop. Slowly, it's revealed to be a gun, different from all the other weapons and all the other items you had seen, which lined up with the 2008 Roblox UI aesthetic. Jim attempts to point the gun and almost tries to cling to it for his dear life. However, as the tension mounts and Jim begins to shake, the gun trembling in his hand, his anxiety grows until he just simply cannot take it anymore. Jim reaches his breaking point. The gun becomes too much to bear. The anxiety of what could be outside and the, and the insistent knocking continues. And so, in the last minute, he looks at the weapon and, unable to withstand the terror of the outside, points that at himself. The screen cuts to black leaving us with a chilling sense of finality. But that concludes the story of Jim and the mysterious happenings of Robloxia come to a close. The truth behind the strange events may remain a mystery and ultimately up to the interpretation of the player. But the memory of Jim still remains chilling and these unsolved questions at the back of our mind. Hello? Is uh, anyone home?
Doesn't seem like it. All right, let's continue. Whilst we never get to see the being that Jim is afraid of, there's a lot to unpack before Jim's untimely end. It is my theory that I believe Jim knows that there is the thing, that whatever he's afraid of is actually there, or at least has some idea about it. It makes sense given that the night section on day one occurs, and this is before any mention of the disappearances begin. It could be that he knows what the thing is, or it could be that he's had more disappearances or just knows more disappearances, or that he's a little more cautious and alert about the closets. However, the three main theories for this story, at least that align with what we see in the narrative that is being spoken, to me, at least, the three theories are the mayor is right, the cover-up theory, and dream theory. In the mayor is right theory, and I know it sounds like a bad name, and it's pretty clear, but just stay with me for a minute. In the mayor's right theory, it's exactly what the name is. The mayor is actually right about the oil refinery spill, which he constantly says on day four, and I believe even day five, that there's no connection to it with the, with the events of the disappearances, is actually true. He seems to be trying to genuinely do his best to give, inf to give information to the public about the situation, but is ultimately unable to contain or fight whatever is making people disappear at night. This lines up as to why the military are there, why he attempts to calm people down, and why Jim keeps checking the closet doors. It could be that there are criminals on the loose attempting to kill or kidnap people in the town, covering up or paying people off. It could also be that Jim was the next target after night four, where whatever was in his home just randomly escapes, to being referenced as someone and not something being inside his home. This will also line up as to why he would be killed on the last day, the insistent knocking likely being a way for them to distract him, or perhaps a way to push him over the edge. Perhaps this was planned by criminals, or perhaps something more supernatural was going on. But whatever the case, the mayor was right in his assertion that the oil spill wasn't really the cause of it, and likely is either a misdirection or a red herring within the story. However, how did the oil spill occur in less than three days of the grand opening of the refinery? Things seem strange, and for this, cover-up theory is to somewhat explain some of these things. Is the theory that the mayor attempted to cover up the incident of the oil spill and actively impeded the, the search in hopes of the matter just dissipating, covering it up enough. However, the matter becomes too big and the government gets involved, eventually declaring martial law in Robloxia, and the, uh, and, well what happens at the end of the game. This makes sense given that the grand opening and the news of the oil spill, or at least it is mentioned, were two days apart or so. The cover-up could be of corruption, poor inspections to the refinery, or perhaps some scientific or government secrets being there. This could explain why the government reacts so quickly to it, why martial law is declared, why the refinery was even built in the first place. This would give mystery, the mystery character, the position of a scientist or a government official or someone that is attempting to help Jim, giving, given that he helps, he tells Jim to prepare before Jim thinks that his home is no longer safe, or before even the news uh, of multiple disappearances occurs. This also includes that the people who disappear without a trace are just people who either got caught up in the cover up or have, were involved in some way with it. With Jim, after day four, or rather night four, being revealed to with being shown to know that someone is in his house, likely being caught in the crosshairs of this cover-up. However, with the incessant knocking and whatever the being was, you know, could be a monster or could be a person, it doesn't make much sense. And this is why my last theory is dream theory. Yes, I know that this is a game, and I know that dream theory is just an overused theory, or game theory, but just- So I was gonna explain dream theory, but I think everyone already knows what dream theory kind of is. It's basically saying it's all a dream, it's not real, and that's really the main point of that whole theory. I'm not gonna go over it, mainly because it's such a very understood concept that just saying that it's a dream, it does not make it real. So, <laughs> yeah, basically what we're saying is that the game isn't real, and I don't really want to waste anyone's time with something that- uh, for the most part of most games is at least most people understand the concept of it so we're not gonna go over it onwards <laughs> it's always just kind of there as perhaps an idea a theory even if it's an overused one and 
just, you know, kind of blending this in with the badges, there's some form of unsettling nature when it comes to them. The badge for joining the game has a blue background of the sky and the computer on. It's also called Enter. It's not too deep, but the ending one is just odd. The badge for completing the game, it's of the sunset background with the computer off. It's a little unsettling getting the badge after you had Jim. Oof. When it comes to dream theory, it could be tied that he escapes his nightmare. Whatever he was dreaming about is gone. And for the others, whether it is a cover-up or not, it could be seen as an escape from life itself. It could be seen as an escape from the perceived from the danger that we never really get to see. The danger that at any moment could easily kill him, given that it almost attempted to on night four. And this uneasiness of the escape badge makes it a little unsettling how you receive this. But ultimately, I think that that's the point. Jim's computer is a tense game that keeps you on your toes, even when you never see what the thing that Jim fears is. It's a short game with a lot open to interpretation. Whether or not you believe my theories is up to you. Whether you believe that the guy with no name is just a figment of, <laughs> a figment of Jim's imagination or a figment or a real person trying to help Jim that might have motivations, whether or not you believe that the monster, the thing, could be a monster, or it could be just a random person, as stated as someone in Night 4, is ultimately up to you. However, whether or not you believe any of that, the ending is still the same. Jim dies, and he's not coming back, and with that, with that short experience, I urge you to play this game. It is an interesting one. One that I honestly cannot emphasize how much I enjoyed and how much I genuinely grew unsettled with it. Yes, there's no jump scares, but there's a lot of tense atmosphere around it. You never know really what's gonna be hiding in the closet door, why Jim keeps looking into the closet doors and what the knocking of the door is. So many questions that ultimately is up to your own mind, up to whatever you believe Jim was fearful of, up to why he even got the computer. Your motivations, the motivations of Jim, the reasonings as to why he does things is ultimately left up to you. But beyond that, thank you for listening to me. I know that this was a little bit uh, unscripted, a little bit messy, but I wanted to get my thoughts out there about this game. It's a good game, and I genuinely would recommend it to anyone. Maybe not to kids, though. I, I don't really think that, you know, a guy offing himself, in a, even if it's a Roblox character, offing himself is a very good thing for kids. But if you ever want to actually play this game, the link will be in the description, and we'll just, you know, it's on Roblox if you ever want to play it. But beyond that, that's it from me. Thank you guys so much for listening, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.